Greetings! Today I'll be taking a look at this pocket set by Windsor and Newton. It contains 12 of their paints from the Cutman line, which is their student range of watercolor paints. The different features of this set in comparison with their other pocket set is the color lineup and the fact that this set includes a small, portable water brush pen. The packaging is very minimal, being comprised of a small paper sleeve and a plastic flat bag. The set itself is white plastic, which seems to be of a nice quality and sturdy. This box doesn't seem intended for plein air painting in particular, as it has no ring or band to help hold it in one hand. It's easy to open and clicks closed quite securely. The water brush is made of transparent plastic. Inside the box, the lid is split into six sections to serve as a mixing palette. It's made in a way that if you have the lid open flat, it props the base of the box at a slight angle. That could be intentional as a way to prevent water from pooling in the paint pans. The base houses the 12 pans and the travel brush and is a nice single piece of plastic. As this set includes a white and a black, I've taken the liberty of ordering two extra pans to replace the ones I don't use. I got a pink and a green, since I'm quite partial to pink being in all my sets, and with that green, it can technically mix into a nice neutral. I think a warm red might have been a better choice instead of the green, or maybe a warm yellow, but since I have older Cutman sets to pillage from, I went for a green that I didn't have before. If you don't have older Cutman pans in your stash, the white and the black in this set give you the freedom to add in two colors of your choice. Cutman pans are not very pricey, so it's not a big setback to modify this set to your liking. I proceeded to unwrap the pans and set them in the order I wanted. This part is pretty much straightforward. The only thing of note is that my pan of turquoise had a whitish surface. It reminded me of how old chocolate can get. There was no smell, texture or depth to it and it was gone after I wet the pan. I had never seen that on a pan before. There's a couple of things I want to mention before going to the swatches. I noticed that this set and the pans have all been made in China. This has not always been the case, especially for the paints. I went to my aforementioned old stash and took out some older Cutman paints that I have. I had pillaged the pans from those, but kept the paint and the packaging. You can see on the older packaging that the paints were once made in the UK. This change might in no way affect the paint itself, but it is something different from when I last used Cutman paints. The plastic pans have changed too, in that they no longer have the Windsor & Newton logo at the bottom. The size is the exact same, but the bottom of the new pans is absolutely flat.
I have a recent pan of Windsor & Newton professional watercolor paint, and those are still made in France. Another thing I observed is that the paint cakes in this Catman set can vary a lot in size. This is not an unusual phenomenon at all. It's present with most brands that use extruded paint cakes in their half pans or pans, like Windsor & Newton or Sennelier. I just thought it was funny how some pans overflow with paint, while a few other barely top the pan. The water brush is actually made in Japan, and identical to another travel brush from Kuriteki. I'm comparing the two, and you can see how they are the exact same model. It's meant to be a super portable format, where you use the reservoir as a cap for the brush when on the move. I'm not sure how practical it is since it requires you to carry a water bottle to fill it. The blue one comes in a set with a super nice 30ml travel bottle, but the Windsor & Newton one comes alone. Now, the swatches. My final lineup for this set is Burnt Sienna, Yellow Ochre, Lemon Yellow Hue, Sap Green, Intense Green, which is also phthalo green yellow shade, Viridian Hue, which is actually Phthalo Green Blue Shade, Alizarin Crimson Hue, Permanent Rose, Diaxazine Purple, Ultramarine, Turquoise, and Payne's Grey. Nine of them are single pigment paints, one is made from two pigments, and two are made from three pigments. The only color that doesn't seem to be transparent is the yellow ochre, as is often the case. I went through my swatches to compare these paints to other paints that I have, that are either similar in name, in color, or in pigment. Most of my swatches are professional paints, so it's a bit unfair on the cutman colors, but it still gives a good idea of where they range, compared to the rest. Some of the colors are very common pigments, like both phthalo greens, the phthalo blue in turquoise, the PV19 pink, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, in purple, and ultramarine. I don't have exact matches for the mixed colors, in this case turquoise, sap green, and Payne's grey. I think most colors don't come out in an unexpected way, like that sap green or yellow ochre are the hue I expect from these colors. I was hoping that turquoise would be less close to phthalo blue and have more of the green in it, but that's the only color from this set that made me feel this way.
I made a few mixes on the paper, mostly to see if there's a good primary triad in this set, and what mixes into a nice neutral. For the triad, I used the turquoise, as a kind of tallow blue, lemon yellow hue, and permanent rose though ultramarine and permanent rose mix into a much prettier purple. I'm not impressed with the neutral mixes, they all came out rather weak. The mix of the purple and intense green is quite strong and pretty. To test out these paints, I decided to add color to these journal pages from Monday. It was a bit of an eventful day, as it can be every time I have to take a recalcitrant cat to the veterinary clinic. I love to record important events in this way. It helps me calm down and remember the important stuff that happened. I show in the beginning of this segment how the brush pen sits well in its tray, with no chance of bumping the tip into the side. I appreciate that they took that into consideration. The mixing area is made from a good plastic on which the paint doesn't bead. As I progressed through these pages, one of the two things that bothered me the most are the paints. I had forgotten how weak the pigment load is in Cutman paints. You have to layer so much to get any kind of richness, or work the paint very concentrated, which is not easy to do with these, considering they are full of binder or filler. If you use these with a water brush, it's even harder since there's a constant influx of water. Which brings me to the second thing that bothered me, the brush pen. It's a good tool, but it lets out too much water for my tastes. If you combine that with the paints, it makes it really difficult to get strong, bright colors. The brush pen also creates unwanted pools of color on the paper, which can then bleed into other areas. It's messy. Again, these are my personal impressions, based on my preferences. If these tools work for you, awesome! I mentioned I had old Cutman paints. These are 10 to 20 years old or so. I took them out to check with the new ones to see if they've changed in that span of time. I gotta say, these are pretty much exactly the same, in color and intensity. I don't think I could tell them apart in a blind test. Doing this first comparison prompted me to do another, this time to compare the overall weakness of the Cutman paints. I have some Windsor and Newton professional paints that match the names of the Cutman range, so I swatched them. The professional paints took a lot less work to get a color that is a lot more rich and vibrant. 
But then again, that's not entirely fair, since those are not from a comparable range. I took out a couple of student range sets I have to compare those to the Cutman paints. First one is Dilla Rowney's Aquafine. I had no expectation, but these completely blew the Cutman colors away. This Aquafine set keeps on proving itself. I'm impressed. The colors are much brighter and easier to reactivate. If I have to choose between Cutman and Aquafine here, Aquafine wins hands down. The second student range I'll compare the Cutman paints to is Talent's Van Gogh paints. I've used this set a lot lately for my World Watercolor Month challenge, so I know it's a decent one. Again, aside from Ultramarine, these colors are all stronger than the Cutman equivalents. I've reviewed both these sets before and I'll link to that in the description box below. The other thing I wanted to check out was to see if this box can accommodate other pans than Windsor & Newton's proprietary model. I expected it to only fit Windsor & Newton pans, but I was able to squeeze in generic half pans, Van Gogh's and Sennelier's. These pans fit even better than the Windsor & Newton ones since they are solidly stuck. They don't shift around when you work a brush in them. Schmincke pans are too wide to fit into this box. So, where does that leave us? For me, this is how I can sum up this set. I don't like the paints. They are not a good match for the way I love to paint. I'd rather use the little Aquafine set if it comes to student range paints. I am not a fan of the brush, which surprised me since the regular water brushes by Kuretake are my favorites. The one from the Cutman set dispenses too much water and it's harder to control. It also dilutes the already weak colors even more. I love the box. It seems sturdy, the plastic is great for mixing and you can easily remove the pans and wash the whole thing if you want. I have a plan for this box, but more about that in a future video. What about you? Cutman love it? Dislike it? Let me know in the comments below. Have a great day, bye bye!